Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The Marianas could soon be part of a travel bubble. We have the details. Also tonight, tragedy hits a popular tourist spot in Marpy. And a new show shot in Tokyo and produced right here in Saipan debuts in North America. In sports, the Hell of the Marianas returns in a different way. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. Great customer rep. Always willing to go above and beyond for his customers. I truly hope she noticed. She gets noticed at work since I do see she is a hard worker. A field technician that visited my home was great and helpful. Thank you. Thank you. You really keep it up. Your customer service is always very good. Awesome customer service with great technicians that are really helpful. Thank you so much, Sherlyn and Docomo Pacific. That's so sweet. <laughs> feels good to see this kind of messages because, uh, you know, we try our best to do customer service. We make sure that we will 100% uh, dissolve the issues. For all those people that are seeking assistance. I just want my customers happy. And help them out each and every day. I would want to go to a place with someone that's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Come to Docomo and uh, you'll feel like you're at home. Across the nation, more and more people are driving under the influence of drugs. The CNMI Department of Public Safety would like to remind you to drive safe this holiday season. Do not drive while under the influence of marijuana, opioids, methamphetamines, or other potentially impairing drugs, including prescription and over-the-counter medication. These drugs can impair your driving and can put you and others in harm's way. Be responsible this holiday season. It's not just your life at risk, but the lives of the people around you. Don't let one poor choice ruin the holidays for you or your loved ones. Drive safe this holiday season. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. Remember, if you feel different, you drive different. It's gonna look a little different in here. Your favorite spot might not be exactly where it used to be. Being next in line might feel a little less like next in line. And our smells might come with a little extra shine. But McDonald's is ready to take your order as safely as we can. Hoffa Day, Turawami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, December 9th, 2020. The Mariana Islands could possibly welcome a limited number of long-stay tourists beginning in January 2021. The MVA board today voted to support a travel bubble and corridor program that would bring long-stay guests in from Korea perhaps as soon as January the 8th. Brian Shin, CEO of the Elan Group, presented the plan this morning. Travelers will take a COVID test prior to departing Korea, be tested on arrival, and then be tested again on the fifth day. So upon the arrival of the airport, they're going to take the uh, first PCR test. They'll be quarantined at PIC. And until the first result is coming out, they're not allowed to go outside of their guest rooms. Once we have all negative results back, which that's what we are hoping, um, we will allow them to use the facility of Pacific Island Club as well as 
Core Ocean Point Golf Course. This is the corridor portion of the plan. Guests will be allowed to move between Coral Ocean Golf Resort and PIC during days two to five of their arrival. We will also quarantine the employees of the PIC and Coral Ocean Point uh, so that we just don't want to take, so that we eliminate the chance of any possible confirmed case going into a community until the third test. So when third test is uh, confirmed as a negative for everybody, everyone will be released. And then they will move to Kensington. Shin said they hope to attract seniors, retirees, and golfers. The airplane will be a charter flight thought to be operated by either Jeju Airlines or Asiana. Negotiations are underway. Governor Torres attended the meeting today. We know that we have a new norm in our lives, whether it's at home, at work, uh, and, or out in the community. And that has not and will not change for a while. Torres met yesterday with Shin and MVA representatives. Torres told the board that he presented the plan this morning to Esther Munia of CHCC. We're not doing this because we're going to get a million dollars or that the government's going to benefit so much into it that we overlook the health care of our community. Several hurdles remain that will be addressed in the coming days. First and perhaps most important is the government of Korea needs to approve a charter flight that is for tourism purposes. This could take up to a week and will be initiated by the airline company. And Elan needs to find tourists with the willingness and means to travel for 30 days. The package won't be cheap. 30 days of hotel golf and meals expected to be eight or nine thousand dollars per person and they will also need to quarantine for 14 days when they return to Korea. That program not expected to change. Elan says their target is to attract 100 long-stay guests. A vehicle driven off of Suicide Cliff leaves one individual dead. Around 4.30 p.m. Tuesday, the Department of Public Safety responded to a 911 call reporting a vehicle runoff at the Suicide Cliff lookout in Marpy. At the scene, police confirmed that a black Toyota Tacoma was found inside a heavy vegetated area just below the cliff line. Units made their way in. And then, of course, uh, DFAMS extinguished the fire because the vehicle was uh, on fire. Um, and then later, we later found that the operator was partially pinned under the vehicle. So once that one was assessed and then that one was taken care of, once the fire was um, controlled and it was safe for units to approach, um, they did recover the body and then transferred the uh, individual over to CHCC. The next of kin has asked for the male's name to be kept confidential as he was the operator of the vehicle. Well, uh, units uh, did notice um, the, a license plate that was found near the area where the vehicle um, ran off the lookout. So we did take that license plate, trace it back. We did find the family name, the registered owner, I should say, and then we did contact them and then contacted the next of kin based on that information. Pangolinan states DPS is unable to state the possible motive at this time as the Crime Investigation Bureau is still investigating the scene. Two individuals have tested positive for COVID-19 through fifth day testing. According to CHCC, this brings the total to 113 since March. The individuals have been moved to isolated quarantine at Kanoa and contact tracing has been initiated. The COVID-19 diagnosis source shows the two individuals originated from the U.S. mainland and that it has been 113 days since the last community transmission. The Sinai business community wants fairness and says IPI should be held accountable for breaking the law. Sally Lemus reports. The Saipan Chamber of Commerce President Velma Palacios says Imperial Pacific International must be held accountable for multiple violations in the law. In a letter addressed to Casino Commission Chairman Edward Dillon Guerrero, Palacios says IPI has violated labor laws, wage and hour laws, and OSHA regulations. Together with the business community, Palacios asks that IPI be held to the same standards as everyone else in practicing good corporate citizenry and governance. 
the Saipan Chamber of Commerce cannot continue to condone IPI's actions, especially the recent incident where IPI deposited escrow fees into their attorney's account to avoid the federal court taking away their assets. The letter also points out that they did that instead of paying their employees. The letter goes on saying that there is suspected abandonment of workers' pay, which should not happen with an investor that puts out a $7 million investment. The Saipan Chamber of Commerce wraps up their letter by asking the CCC to hold IPI accountable in making right by their employees, creditors, vendors, and to complete phase one of their project. I'm Sally Lemis for KSPN News. One of the largest family-owned businesses on island makes a generous donation to the American Red Cross. Salimus has his story. Preparations for the island's biggest fundraiser event has begun. On Tuesday, officials from the American Red Cross NMI chapter began accepting donations for this year's Club 200 party. Board Chairwoman Tanya Camacho says the main sponsors for the event will be the Jotun Dai Dai Foundation and Jotun Group of Companies. Made a significant donation to the American Red Cross. They have committed over $25,000 in support throughout the years. And so for this particular fundraiser for Club 200, together with Ace Hardware, um, they are our main sponsors. The Jotun Dai Dai Foundation donated $5,000, while this year's grand prize will be a $10,000 gift certificate at Jotun Ace Hardware. We're happy to um, help support the Red Cross in their humanitarian, humanitarian mission of um, alleviating human suffering. Um, you know, natural disasters never stop. So we're here to help them um, continue to assist our community. But this year's Club 200 will be a bit different. Due to the pandemic, it kind of pushed everybody to transition to the virtual platform. And so the American Red Cross has done an amazing job transitioning, utilizing the virtual format. And so we felt that it was still important for us to come together as an organization to continue to raise funds for the American Red Cross to help us to be able to provide services to our community in fulfilling our humanitarian mission. So just because it's virtual, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be as fun as prior years. So it's something completely different, but we know that it's still going to be a rocking party. The theme is Wild About the Red Cross with live virtual performances, volunteer recognition, door prizes, and silent auctions. Tickets are $50 each and are available online. Reporting for KSPN News, I'm Sally Lemis. Coming up after the break, a behind-the-scenes look at robots and the future of travel as we head to Tokyo, Japan. our annual Pacifica Art Contest. We had over 1,500 entries to date by local young artists ages 6 to 17. PHI Pharmacy in Gofadahi, Dihinim Lomu. Our complete line of pharmaceuticals and lowest prices ensure you get the treatment that you deserve. Our compassionate, friendly, multilingual staff will take the time to get to know you, explain your medications to you, and answer any questions that you may have. 
kutsu wayor sa feye emuel ebalisiu klalyam wires. Inumin nang inyong gamot, ayon sa inyoriseta ng inyong doktor, at alin sunod sa bilin ng inyong pharmaceutical. We accept most insurance, but in case you don't have coverage, we offer cost-effective generic drugs. PHI Pharmacy, your lifelong partner in health. PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. A meal replacement smoothie is a great way to keep your fitness goals on track during the holiday season and they taste great, fast and easy. The December smoothie of the month is Minty Java Chocolate Chip and it's just $5. Check out the Shake Cafe Gold's Gym, Garibin. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Our new show, Tech Trek, made its North American debut this month on PBS in Oregon. The show looks at robots, automation, and the future of work and travel. Tonight, we take you behind the making of Tech Trek, which can be seen later this month on Channel 2. Tech Trek explores the intersection of travel and technology in the hospitality industry. Chapter 1 was shot in Japan just prior to the shutdown of the country and much of the world. Todd Montgomery and Chris Nelson are co-hosts of the program. The pair previously hosted a show together called Eye on the CNMI. Both share a love for Saipan, for sports, and for adventure travel. Montgomery got his MBA in Sydney, then served as a corporate director for Starwood Hotels and as a senior consultant for Pros Pricing, both in the Asia-Pacific market. He joined OSU in 2013 and helped launch the Hospitality Management Degree Program in 2015. He is the Robin and Kurt Bainey Professor for Teaching Excellence in Hospitality Management. Nelson worked locally as the news director for MCV, founded two adventure travel companies, and founded KSPN2 in 2007. Todd had this idea about a show about the future of work, something that we could explore, and so he called up and, and we were real happy to, uh, to help. He has produced travel segments that include climbing to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, mountain biking on the Inca Trail in Peru, hiking the Milford Track in New Zealand, snorkeling between continents in Iceland, and building artificial reefs in Indonesia. The first episode of Tech Trek was shot in and around Tokyo, home to industry-leading automation projects. Robots have been used extensively for a number of years, here for everything, to detecting radiation levels in the aftermath of the 2011 tsunami, to making and delivering coffee. It's also home to the robot restaurant. We check in with Montgomery from his home in Bend, Oregon. We've spent some time in Tokyo. We know. Uh, how unique the Japanese culture is and how it's embraced technology very differently than really any culture that I know of. And I think our first segment on the, the robot restaurant really, really shows that, the, that really nice blend of culture and technology. Uh, and it just, it's fun, it's fun to see, fun to see people playing, playing robots and uh, having fun games with that. In another segment, Todd and Chris visit a hotel that has some front desk staff that you don't want to mess with. Don't ask for a late checkout here. The hotel has 100 rooms and just two employees on at a time and those are hard to find. Uh, our goal is no staff in the hotel. General manager of the hotel doesn't have to worry too much about human resources or remembering employees' birthdays. Just switch on off. That whole hotel is uh, is run by one or two people. We went out to the employee parking area and the employee parking area was like a bike rack with, with two slots for the housekeepers. Automation is increasingly playing a bigger and bigger role in service-oriented jobs and the pandemic has now accelerated this trend. It looks like automation is coming to not just tourism but lots of places. We shot this just before COVID and so the automation that we saw happening was 
companies investing in less people. When COVID hit and the lockdown hit, and companies literally overnight were faced with the decision of how do you survive? Uh, and do it in a way where, you know, you have to keep a distance and, um, you know, have operational efficiency, you know, make it financially viable. I mean, all these things, and you just had to embrace it or, or, you, or, you, or you closed. And so that was the switch. And now the great question is, is as a vaccine is looming and hopefully a way of life, a way of life uh, comes back is, you know, I, why would companies after making that investment, seeing their competitors do it, why would they go back? The pair also venture into one of the most advanced robotic conferences on the planet. The robots are coming. Each year they are getting better at picking, turning, stocking, scanning, delivering food and drinks, and even taking temperatures. Traditional security guards may soon be on their way out, as robot security guards are coming. The security robot can use 24-7, mm -hmm. all day, all night. Tech Trek, Chapter 2, There it is! Montgomery watched the North American debut at his home in Oregon, surrounded by his wife and kids. Domo arigato, Mr. Rabato. Now with new projects, we know it's important to have friends and family on your side. Constructive criticism is helpful, unbiased notes help. Most important is to be completely honest in these types of situations. How was Tech Trek? It was awesome. Are you saying that just because I'm your husband? <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you I, saying it because you want maybe one of these delicious <gasps> Twinkies? Maybe. All right, Mosey, what would you think of the show? Um, it was good. Join me, Courtney B. as we explore. That's all you got? <laughs> <laughs> that was good? It was great. <laughs> All right. Is that better? <laughs> Lulu, how was Tech Trek? There's a Twinkie. Well, Todd was a regular fixture on KSPN2 Sports. He met his wife here during the Micronesia Games back in 2006. The result, a gold medal and three kids. You can see Tech Trek Chapter 1 in its entirety later this month right here on Channel 2. All right, coming up in the Sports Report, stay on the grass, and that's what these students did to win medals. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Mariana's Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Mariana's Trekking, Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. Take your turn at the most unique restaurant on Saipan. Daily lunch specials are just $9.99 and come with super salad. Happy hour starts at 5 o'clock. And dinner features spectacular sunsets and great food at reasonable prices. $360 can be chartered for parties, events, birthdays, and weddings. Make it special. Make it $360. The best food and view all the way around. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Ghost Gym, and today we're going to go over the kettlebell deadlift. Fantastic exercise to build overall strength, particularly in the legs and hips. Remember, we want to make sure that our setup is in good position. If, you're, if, you, if you set up in a bad position, it's not going to look good and it's certainly not going to feel good. So a common setup, error setup is a, obviously a rounded upper back. Two simple ways of correcting that. All I'm gonna have Vince do here is extend his arms up here and all he's gonna do is think about reaching long and pushing his hips back. Reach long and push your hips back. 
So as you can see, he's already in good position. Now he, all he's gonna do is grab that kettlebell. He's got tension in his legs and in his back. All he's gonna do is just stand up tall, finish with his glutes. Thank you for being here with us. For finding ways to keep things happening. For making things feel a lot better. Thank you. Energize, realize, feel so good just to be alive. Time's a gift, my time is free. I can spend it on you, you can spend it on me. I can say you'll be blown away by the change you see, you see in me. And I feel alright, dance all night, put a little flavor in my life. Thank you for staying strong with us. And for us. Thank you for always connecting. For keeping us together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us that despite this distance, we are still better together. Docomo Pacific, better together. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. Buenas sports fans, PSS was able to successfully conclude their first interscholastic sports competition last weekend. Here's a look at the elementary and middle school cross country races. First things first, picture taking. Yeah, this is 2020. It's all about taking pictures on your cell phone. Welcome to the 2020 All School Cinema Cross Country Championships. You have one last. That is 1.1 miles as you go around the course. Runners, take your marks! The fans are here, anyway. Go, 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 go! That girl. He's only one year old. She's already won in the race. Moshi Sicko from Brilliant Star breaks away early and sets the pace. Five right now. Yeah, keep it up, keep it up. He was the runaway winner in the boys' division, 703. Pretty good for a fifth grader. Now that it's over, tell me, uh, what were you expecting to, at this race today? Uh, I wasn't expecting to run that fast. <laughs> you, you got under eight minutes there. You got seven minutes something. Is that your best? I don't know. It's around the same time as I got uh, last. And what do, you, what do you attribute to your success today? How is it possible that you were able to do so fast today? Uh, just keep running. Just keep running. Right on, brother. All right. Jesse Campbell from Agape Christian School pulls away with a strong sprint to the finish line to finish first among the girls just over eight minutes, leading her school to the school championship. Are you pleased with your time today? Yes. <laughs> Is that your best ever? Yes. Now that it's all over, how do you feel? Just tired. You know, Star soccer player Caitlin Chavez beat all these boys and girls in the middle school championships while Agape ruled the team competitions. Congratulations to you all. The 13th Hell of the Marianas did not look like the previous 12, but as they say in show business, the show must go on. 
When the first Hell of the Marianas bike race was held back in 2007, the intent was to bring in international riders to showcase the island. But 2020 is unique. Due to the pandemic, there were no visitors. Yet veteran rider Russ Quinn, who rode in all of the previous races, says the large number of residents who showed up kept it an exciting event. You know, there was so much participation locally that it felt like it was a little bit of an international event. There were, I don't know, over a hundred riders that came out and participated. So, um, you know, it's always great to see people from uh, around the world coming to our island and visiting and, and participating. But for me, uh, it still felt like it was a, a great race. And so I don't think it hampered much. It was just nice to keep the race going, even in a time where it's a little bit difficult to do that. Another change? shortening the course from around the island to only in the north, downsizing it from 100K to 68K. No, actually, I really did like the, the new course. You know, I think that, of course, Saipan's a, a small island, so the interest of riding around a whole island is, is something that's kind of cool to see and, and experience and say. But really, when you highlight the most beautiful part of the island, which is the northern part of the island, uh, to me anyway, is that, you know, you get to see bonsai, you get to see suicide, it's less traffic, I think it's a little easier to uh, maybe manage. Joe Bucco was the fastest rider, finishing in two hours and 19 minutes, Robin Spath first female. Quinn, well, he was just glad to participate this year. I was recently diagnosed with a, a, a rare cancer and, uh, you know, it's obviously a little bit of a shock in life for me, but, uh, you know, after you get over that, you kind of say, okay, what's what's life going to be like? And, uh, you know, fortunately, my treatments have been not too, too bad and I've been able to continue to live a pretty active lifestyle. So I just decided I was going to at least participate. I didn't do the full race, but I went out and did my best and had fun with it and wasn't going to let something like this keep me down. And credit to Ferdy De La Torre for that award-winning video of that race. Thank you very much, Ferdy. All right, coming up, a very pleasant weather report. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! It's my favorite time of year, filled with holiday cheer, family, friends, and celebrations. And although this year is like no other, we made it through 2020. So we, the KSP and crew, want to wish you and your crew a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Every holiday season is special, but this year, it's the most special ever, because we made it. Here we are at the end of 2020, still standing, Looking forward to the better year that is surely coming. KSBN TV News celebrates with you and wishes you and your loved ones the very best. Go-karts, off-roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at marianastrekking.com. Hours, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at marianastrekking.com. Golfers. Come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now, just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. So what are you going to do this year? At Gold's, a dedicated fitness studio with a cushioned floor is perfect for group exercise. The cardio room features a variety of treadmills, bikes, steppers, and ellipticals. Fitness machines will help you achieve your goals, and the largest free weight area on Saipan gives you comfortable space to work out. Gold's gym team is ready to help you get to your goals. Try harder. We know you can do it.
All right, today's high only 86, the low 76 in Charlotte and Glide. Humidity 68% tomorrow, partly sunny, isolated showers, northeast winds 15 to 20, high 87, low 78, seas 4 to 6 feet, sunrise 632, sunset at 548. And that is it. A beautiful Wednesday here in the CNMI. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you back here on Friday night. Thank <laughs> you.